There you go. <laughs> okay. So do you, do you want to say that you got it? Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Good. We, we have uh, Giovanni Cavalletto given our market update today. I think you may have just saw notice on your screen that today's meeting will be recorded uh, just so we can have an archive of it. And um, we are on an open Zoom format. So if you could please uh, exercise the mute button. And if you uh, would like to ask any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and you can, you can ask the questions live. Um, there are the chat options that we have at the bottom of the screen in the toolbar that you can send questions to the group by chat or again, um, unmute and ask your questions live. So uh, with that, I, I really appreciate your guys' attendance and uh, we can go ahead and get started uh, with uh, Mr. Cavalletto. Okay, thank you very much, Keith. And thank you, Sophia, for, for putting this together. Um, uh, it's 1103 it looks like so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started we've got a lot to go through and if anybody gets in late um, they can always uh, uh, see the uh, I believe we're going to be uploading this on the index website so uh, I hope everybody first off I hope everybody's getting through this uh, warm weather that uh, okay we uh, as a sales team saw that this was coming last week and tried to start getting the word out a little bit early so the growers could prepare with irrigation and, and, and that sort of thing to help um, best defend against this uh, first heat wave of the, of the season. So I hope everybody's uh, doing okay on that. Uh, last week was a very, very large week in arrivals of avocados um, to the U.S. market. It might have been the third largest <clears throat> week in history. Of uh, 77 million pounds came into the market. Uh, unlike about uh, three or four or five weeks ago, back then we only had two different options for avocados in the U.S. market. Basically, you had uh, you had uh, California Hass and you had old crop Mexican Hass. You know, of course we had our gem program, which uh, we'll get to in a second, but that was a, a very, very small volume in the, in the whole scheme of things, less than one half of 1%. So a month ago, we basically had two options of avocados in the US market. Over the next uh, seven or eight weeks, the number of options is, is gonna grow to seven or more. And that's gonna, even if, the, even if the volume didn't go up, which it has, that just the addition of the different options adds some noise and some uh, confusion to the industry. So we're gonna have California has here and in the next uh, three or four weeks, we're gonna have a little bit of California lambs, old crop Mexican fruit. On July 5th, Mexico is gonna start their Flor Loca and they're gonna have carry out through the month of July of old crop. And, and Peru has started arriving um, in volume. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, we've also got a little bit coming in from, from uh, some green skins coming in from the Caribbean. We've got uh, Florida avocados are started. They usually run, you know, the second half of the year, July through December, but they started harvesting last week. And then a uh, little bit from Colombia, although that's not going to be significant volume, it will be um, one more flavor to add to the mix. Uh, where are we at on the California harvest? We're, as of Monday, we had completed 156 million pounds of the crop were in the barn. That's right at about the 60% mark of the, of the season. Um, so we're over the halfway point and, and we're at, uh, 
and we're at the middle of June. So we still have we still have quite a ways to go before we finish out this California crop. One thing that's been really a big change this year that I've noticed is it's been very, very much a northern crop. Um, you know, for the last 10 years or so, the 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 uh, southern share of the crop is gone from what used to be 50% down to about 40% for the last few years. This year, season to date, the South is running about 33% um, of the inbound bins. Uh, and, and for those of you that might not be familiar with it, the South is gonna be your uh, Escondido, Fallbrook, Temecula growing districts, whereas the North is Ventura, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo counties where we do the um, dividing line. So, um, and the South this week decreased its harvest by another 15% despite the heat wave. Um, so it looks like if that, if, if these trends continue, we could get to the end of the season where the South maybe for the first time in history could end up being a little bit less than 30% of, the, of all the California avocados brought to market. Um, that's a big change and it's opening up even a little bit more of a window in organics. So if the participation of the South is, has declined down to, you know, 30 or 35% over the last five years, they really remain dominant on the supply side for California organics. This year they're running, um, uh, they're running 60% even though they're only 30% of the total, they're running 60% of the organics. Last year, it was over 65%. Um, so as the South winds down, we think that this uh, window for organics is, is probably gonna open up even a little bit more than it has. Um, what else is going on in the industry? Uh, gap is starting to come up again. So during the, COVID period, uh, Gap kind of went dormant in the discussions with retailers and Gap certification, uh, but that's starting to come up again. So I had a hour and a half long conversation with a large retailer last week about uh, good agricultural practices in the field. And uh, Keith and Bailey yesterday were at the Avocado Inspection Committee meeting and uh, CDFA brought up that they're gonna be uh, doubling the number of inspectors in the field uh, looking at FISMA compliance. Uh, so this is, you know, we, we got kind of a, uh, not quite a pass, but over the last year during, the, during COVID, we uh, didn't hear as much about GAP, but it's starting to come up again as things uh, get back to normal. Uh, the good news right now in the market is that California continues to get a fairly significant premium, uh, especially on the 48s and larger, somewhere in the range of eight to ten dollars plus um, on some sizes over the imported fruit. Uh, that has been the widest premium I've ever seen in my career paid for California fruit, and I think it really goes speaks volumes to the value that the California Avocado Commission is, is, is doing for us as an advocate out in the marketplace. And, you know, again, just a, how important it is to have uh, fresh fruit in the market, especially in, on the Pacific coast where, where people are willing to, to pay that premium for it. Uh, with that said, I think July is gonna be a fairly, um, crowded market as we, you know, we, we absorbed 77 million pounds last week. I, I don't see a scenario where that can go um, without some repercussions in the market. So I think that's going to, if that continues, um, we could see a little bit of a weakening. It looks like July is going to be a fairly crowded market with those seven flavors of avocados uh, that I described at the beginning of this meeting. Um, and then hopefully sometime by the middle of August, uh, some of those flavors, you know, we'll, 
By early August, we'll see the old crop Mexico disappear. By the second half of August, we'll see um, Peru disappearing. Um, so hopefully, th th there should be some light at the end of the at the end of the tunnel. But in the meantime, July is going to be uh, fairly crowded. The next subject that our field team is going to be reaching out to everybody about is uh, the lambhouse harvest. Uh, we've published the release dates on the fresh packs for those of you that have uh, lamb house. And what we're gonna be looking to do is bring those in in a critical mass, uh, similar to what we did with the, with the gems. This has been our most successful gem year by far. Uh, we, we are very, very appreciative of all the growers. They cooperated uh, with us on that to get to, to tailor the harvest to what the market was demanding. We're very, very proud of our sales team who um, this, this was their fourth year out pitching this. Um, Sophia worked with them on getting the materials, getting the marketing information, working with bloggers and social media to get the word out. And we're very proud of the success that we had this year on the gems and our, uh, would like to do something similar with the lambs as we begin those and bring them in in critical mass. We're gonna have a lot more success than having them kind of uh, dribble in over the period with a few bins this week and no bins and, and, and more. So please, uh, those of you that have lamb hats, work closely with your um, field representative to help to coordinate that um, so that we can all bring it in uh, together. Uh, so that's kind of the news out of Mexico. Where are we at on the competitive field? In Mexico, we're in the last uh, two or three weeks of their official season. They go from July through June. Um, so they're finishing out their old crop. There was a harvest slowdown three weeks ago that lasted for about 10 days. And that harvest slowdown bought us a little bit of time. So if you remember last time we got together last month, I was projecting that June was gonna be a fairly crowded market, but by Mexico reducing its harvest in those two weeks from about 1,100 truckloads to 700, that took some of the pressure off. So going into the harvest slowdown, there were, a, I think the high water mark was about 72, million pounds in inventory. If Mexico had not slowed down, things would have gotten really sloppy after that. But by having them slow down to about 700 loads for two consecutive weeks, that took some of that pressure off. Last week, as you heard in, in my opening comments, they came roaring back along with the first arrivals out of uh, South America, and we had 77 million pounds. So it looked Again, it, it's going to get crowded um, unless they unless they pull back again, which they did a little bit uh, this week. Uh, so anyhow, the long story short, that that harvest slowdown bought us a couple of extra weeks in in uh, on the California harvest, and we'll see how they behave uh, as they finish out the old crop and uh, and then add the floor loca. Um, next month. Uh, right now on the floor loca, they're projecting about, on the official estimates, they're projecting about 20% less floor loca than what they had last year. Um, and so that, that could be a good thing that could start to, start to uh, appear sometime in late August or early September, where as if Mexico has 20% less loca like they're projecting as California and Peru begin exiting the market, um, it might be hard for them to fill that gap completely. Um, let's go on and talk a little bit about Peru, who's the most recent arrival in the market. They've gotten a later start than normal. That's despite the new plantings up in the almost area. And, uh, but the dry matter just was not, uh, 
accumulating as fast as they would have liked. And then uh, a, a fairly hot European market took a lot of that early fruit. But the arrivals are started now. And uh, most of that's going to be coming in for uh, program business. They are starting to hear some of you that are uh, um, uh, watching the news might be hearing a little bit about container shortages and wood shortages and, and, and a lot of things that have been exacerbated by COVID. And that's really, that's, that's a, the container shortage worldwide is a true phenomenon. And they've had a, they've had a heck of a time securing enough ocean vessel containers um, out of South America, both Chile and, and Peru. And that's having a, an impact in fresh produce. Uh, somebody shared an anecdote with me that those uh, containers uh, can make about three turns around the world in a year. And that right now they're only making one. And that that's being exacerbated by a new COVID flare up in China where a lot of vessels are being tied up. That sounds excessive that, you know, if, if that were true, um, that two thirds of the world's shipping containers would be out of commission. But even if it's not true, it's a, it's a pretty strong anecdote to illustrate um, uh, the, the shortage that they're seeing right now. The late start out of Peru may, may be trans, translatable into a later finish. They might go into September a little more than they had, but it's not always a late start is not always uh, directly correlated to a late finish. Um, unlike other countries of origin, they've got a, a very narrow window of about a 15 week house harvest window. And they also in the USDA protocols, they're the only country that has a ceiling of 29% um, dry matter. So once they get to 29% dry matter, they can't ship, they can't export the fruit to the United States anymore, according to the protocol that they worked out with USDA. Um, but we'll monitor that and the, uh, the sales team will, will keep everybody informed on how that is, is evolving. So they shipped about 13 million pounds last week. We think that that's gonna peak at about 18 million pounds um, per week in July. Um, getting back to California, uh, index is continuing to coordinate with Gerardo. I know many of you, uh, work closely with Gerardo and have appreciated the, uh, cultural advice that he shared with the farms down in Chile. They, they're kind of, uh, as they go into winter, the COVID situation is still very, uh, very severe. Um, their vaccination distribution has not been as robust as the vaccinations in the United States have been. Um, so Gerardo is still uh, having difficulty being able to make it up here. Right now, it appears that the earliest he could be up here is late July. We're continuing to cooperate with him on, uh, on getting the, all the necessary documents to be able to travel. Uh, and you, the field team will be uh, in touch with all of you as soon as we have the dates available. Um, I'm also very excited to um, share that we're planning on doing our next seminar, cultural seminar in September. We're planning on that one uh, being live now that California is opening back up. So we will be doing that seminar sometime in September and again, doing this live. So we'll start down in Fallbrook, uh, do a meeting in Oxnard and finish up in San Luis Obispo. Uh, this is, the team is especially uh, proud about this one. This is gonna be number 25, which is really a, an important milestone for us. I think it's our 11th year of doing these. And so, so, Keith and Giuseppe and Bailey and Mauricio and Jose are, are uh, working to put together a, 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 a good showing for that. If anybody has any topics that they think would they would be interested in hearing, uh, please contact uh, one of us because this uh, we're looking to uh, 
We're looking to, to identify a uh, pertinent topic for everybody and that'll, that'll drive a lot of people there and add value to uh, what we're trying to do out in the field. Because again, these are uh, the, the idea of, of both of these efforts, both Gerardo's outreach and the cultural seminars is to help um, increase the pounds per acre and the productivity and profitability of the California avocado business. Uh, that brings me to kind of the end of the thoughts that I had put together. Keith or Giuseppe, I don't know if you're, have there been some questions or observations during this? No, no um, questions through the chat, Giovanni. Thank you for the, um, thank you for the update. Um, any other questions uh, for Giovanni? You covered a lot there, Giovanni. Um, looks like um, we've got another easy crowd this week. Okay, well, I appreciate uh, everybody uh, for getting on. I hope that this added some value. If you had any questions or comments, please don't hesitate in reaching out to me personally or anybody on the field team. We'll be... Uh, uh, going back to more regular tailgate meetings, more like in the past, uh, as we come out of this social isolation and get back to business as, as usual. And please, if you, if you have any topics you'd like us to address in that next seminar, we, we wanted to make it a special one to uh, really celebrate uh, that this is number 25. So thank, thank you, everybody. Giovanni. Thank you, everybody.